probably noticed that since I got back from Kenya, I've been on this effort to have us consider uh, the mystery, the, the wonder of grace. And I want to continue to stay there. And I'm beginning to realize now as, as we're continuing in the search process and, and working along on that, that I guess this is kind of a legacy that I hope remains here at Messiah for a long, long time. Um, and that is that we understand are living in the life of grace. Uh, and, and, you know, there's a lot of definitions we can use for grace, it's, uh, but it really boils down to undeserved blessings, doesn't it? Or as a teenager who taught me when I was just starting ministry, I, I thought I was going to teach them something uh, in the first youth group I ever did out of seminary. And, of course, I had finished my education, so I thought I was all set. I asked them what grace was, and one of them said, well, it's God's riches at Christ's expense. And I said, excuse me? And she said, yeah, G-R-A-C-E. It's God's riches at Christ's expense. I went, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. I'll remember that. Thanks. <laughs> I have no idea what I taught. No, I, I went, yes, God's riches at Christ's expense. And, and when, when we consider the mystery that that is the life that we get to enter into because of what Jesus has done for us, you know, I hope our minds are just going, that's amazing. And that our hearts are just so deeply touched and going, that's phenomenal. Why? Because a life of grace is vastly different from any other system we experience in this world, isn't it? A church isn't, doesn't, uh, uh, other, many other churches don't operate with that. It's membership and giving. Uh, businesses don't operate like that. It's, it's all about performance, the bottom line, as our, as our culture says. Uh, school doesn't operate that way. It can't. You know, family, well, there's so much rules and regulations we have to teach kids, don't we? That, that it, it's hard to emphasize grace when you're teaching don't do that, do that, and so on. Um, other religions don't operate that way. Buddhist, Hindu, Muslim, it's all about what you do and how many times you do it. And, but we get to enter into a vastly different world when we accept the gift of Christ, don't we? And, and so I, I want you to just join me in that whoa, this is amazing, and, and how foreign that is to everything else. And that's why we have to learn it. And, and it's not like we get a, a clean slate and start defining how, how to live this life. We got to, even as we're learning it, we got to erase all the other things that we've learned from the world and from sin and from evil and all the stuff of our lives, don't we? It's like, you serious? We, we can live by grace? You, you actually love me? You know, that, that sort of thing. And that's why, yes, I, I, I will continue to take some time to have us consider the many aspects of this. Three weeks ago, I, I brought back pictures of Kenya, not just because I thought you'd be interested in seeing pictures of Kenya. But what I was trying to emphasize with those pictures is people who have what are, we would perceive as nothing and yet filled with grace. When the only chairs available were for the guests, and I don't know where those plastic chairs came from because everything else, everybody was sitting on the ground. And their homes were made out of, out of, you know, weave stuff or mud. There was no technology. They were just relationships, and there was God. And it was wondrous. And then the next week, I, I invited you to consider Psalm 91, that the whole mystery that there's actually a prayer in Scripture that we can enter into what that relationship looks like, what that covenant relationship, that when we run under the wings of the Lord, He's got all these blessings He's going to take care of for us. It's, it's phenomenal. And, and, of course, because he sees things from the perspective of not just this life, but the life to come, it really is phenomenal. And then last week, the, 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 the whole mystery of, of peace through prayer and direction and purpose through prayer, we have the privilege of going to God in prayer. And when we don't, What are we losing in our lives and those around us? What are we missing because we're not praying and we're not inviting God to participate in this journey that he's designed for us? It's really a tragedy when we don't pray, a tragedy, because we'll be missing so much of life. You see, the grace demands certain understandings, certain aspects of life, a way of living, a way of thinking, a heart condition and a mind condition, choices that we make. It's all wrapped up in grace. It's always there. And will we walk in that way of grace? Will we live in that grace? Will we share the grace? Or are we just going to receive it for ourselves? 
and say, thanks so much, I've got to get on with the rest of my life. Do you hear what I'm saying? So, so today what I actually comically am, am going to uh, invite you to consider is uh, Grace's F3. Now, for many of us in this room uh, who have gotten on to the, the enjoyment of, of F3 or FIA for the women, um, F3 is, is, is our, our workout effort. And there's what, seven or eight guys and a, a few gals in the church that participate in that. In fact, I have one of my team shirts on right here. F3, see? I really do. I won't strip down completely because I'd probably be too embarrassed and Jill would scream at me. But, um, <laughs> but, but, but F3, is, F3 is really the, the, the principles are very, very significant. It's fitness, fellowship, and faith. And all three of them are active. And, and so we work out, but we're building up each other rather than putting each other down. That's different from most guys and most workout programs. We actually encourage each other as we're working out. And we have as part of it that we, we go back for the six. What that means is if someone's trailing behind, we go back to join him so he's not left alone. That's unheard of in military workouts. But, um, but we also have faith. We, we get around, we share prayer requests, and we, we pray together. And we have other activities for fellowship. And we, there's a lot of service activities, so the, the faith gets put into practice. I mean, it's a, it's a whole way of looking at life. Uh, fitness, fellowship, and faith. But, but I, what I found is grace has three F's to it as well. You see, when, when we get into the faith aspect of this business, there, there really are three F's, and that's what I want us to consider. Uh, the first of the F's that we're going to talk about is forgiveness. Because the grace journey starts and embraces that, but it stays there. It never leaves that. Uh, though, though certainly our, our surrender to the Lord is, uh, starts as an act. It's an ongoing way of life, isn't it? Uh, so we're going to spend some time on forgiveness today. We're going to look at freedom um, not just because it's uh, November 11th, but, but the language of what freedom we have in Christ. And then the last F is fellowship. Yeah, we're going to repeat that one out of F3 in the workout plan because there's something mysterious about how grace is experienced in the community. So it's that simple today. That's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at forgiveness. We're going to look at freedom. And we're going to look at fellowship, okay? So turn, turn with me back to Colossians where I was last week where I ended, and I want, want you to pick up with me at Colossians chapter 1. And actually, first pick up uh, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 11. It's in the middle of the paragraph, probably. Colossians chapter 1, verse 11. Paul is, remember, writing, writing to people he has never met, but he has heard about their faith. And he's praying for them in this portion. And he says, may you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy. Don't you like that? Patience with joy is what he prays for. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered, or the translation is in the NIV is rescued us from the dominion of darkness, and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. That is, because of the cross, because of the innocent blood shed for us, we have uh, had performed on us a divine rescue mission. Now, rescue mission, that language is normally used to describe something that we can't do in and of ourselves, right? Uh, you, don't, you don't rescue yourself. A, a rescue mission is something that someone else does for you. We could probably go around and have a lot of laughs over what, where we found ourselves in circumstances, or serious circumstances, where we needed somebody to rescue us. The one that first came to mind uh, for me this morning when I was in here early was um, I was helping, as some of us were, putting a new roof on Daniel and Kathleen's house back 10 or so years ago when they were here. I had gotten up to the primary roof. I was climbing up to the secondary roof. It was all of about this high, I guess. We had a little ladder there, and I had a bundle of, of shingles on my shoulder to climb up, and it, guys, you know that's a bit awkward. I got on the third step, and the ladder gave out. And what I hadn't anticipated was my leg was just stepping off to step onto the upper roof. So I dropped down the three feet, and I've still got the bundle on my shoulder. I'm standing on my right leg. My left leg, my boot, is now caught in the gutter on the upper roof. I think that's called a spread eagle. 
and um, I could not. I, I was hyperextended, so I, I had nothing left to get the boot out of the gutter. And I'm standing there like this with my leg way up there. And Daniel had some interesting comments, of course, as he always does. And he looked at me and said, wow, I've never seen that done before. <laughs> I said, um, Daniel, I, I can't move right now. <laughs> he said, well, first, let me take the bundle. So he came over. And you can see him do it. For those of you who know Daniel, he, uh, British humor is it's just hysterical. Not necessary at that moment, but it was present. <laughs> so he takes the bundle off my shoulder. And then he, he says, okay. And I said, yeah, I, I, I can't move. I'm stuck. <laughs> So he literally came over and, and grabbed me with one arm and, and kind of sh snuggled me up a little bit and picked up my leg and got it out of the gutter and got me back down. And then gave me the bundle back so I could go back. <laughs> he said, I'll hold the ladder this time. Uh, and and my, my point is, that was a rescue mission. I, I could not, I was stuck. I was just stuck. I could have been there, I could have been there to this day. You know? But fortunately, someone else was there to get me. You know, a divine rescue mission is, is God redeems us. He delivers us. When we think about the language of deliverance, you know, too often we jump to the, 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 the satanic and so on. And that's important. And I'm grateful that many of us have had experience in that. But there's a deliverance of another kind that's a rescue mission. To rescue us from ourselves and the stinking thinking to rescue us from this world and its values. We'll talk about this a little bit more in a moment. To rescue us from Satan and darkness so that God can put us into a place of light. How do we experience that? Through forgiveness. That's how, how the soul, that's how the spirit is set free. Forgiveness. Now, now look with me further on, uh, at Colossians chapter, also chapter 11. Uh, Colossians chapter 2. He continues in this theme again, Colossians chapter 2, again, verse 11. In him, he says, you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Having been buried with him in baptism, he also talks about that in Romans, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God who raised him from the dead. And you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. Do you hear what he's saying? All of the stuff that we did that is so offensive to God, sin, trespasses, whatever, stuff that we want to justify out of our brokenness or our difficult circumstances, whatever, all the things that we have done in life that are displacing to God, he nailed that to the cross, and that was part of our being dead. That is, it's not just a rescue mission. It's death to life. That's what he wants for us. That's why he died for us. That just as he died and rose, we can too when we turn to him. That's the language of repentance. It's why forgiveness is so important in our lives on a regular basis. I am not just talking about dropping to our knees before God, although that is essential. I'm talking about all the forgiveness that we have to extend to each other and live out of our heart. I was, I was thinking this morning, I don't know how many times we say, sorry, but, uh, honey, I, I didn't hear what you said. What, can, can you repeat it? Sorry, I didn't hear. Sorry, I got preoccupied. It's, it's, the way we, it's the way you live when you're healthy. When you want to experience new life, you don't want to have anything get in the way. Honey, did I say something wrong when I, did we? Uh, or, or, Jim, was that all right when I, it, it's to, to keep processing and making certain that if something needs to be forgiven, it's named and it's let go. Because life is too short to cling to those. We don't need to keep score. I had lunch with somebody this week, and they said, oh, it's my time to pick up the tab. I said, really? He said, yeah, I'm sure you paid for it last time. I said, I don't know. I don't keep score. It's a wonderful way to live, not keeping score with anyone. Forgiveness is at the very center of grace because once we have been forgiven, then we realize it's all gift. It's all blessing. We haven't earned anything. What we deserve is death for sin. 
What God has instead proclaimed in Jesus is, no, I have life for you, and I'll nail your sins to the cross. Hallelujah. And, and is it any wonder that when Peter says, well, how many times should we forgive? Seven times? And, and Jesus goes, what? <laughs> Not seven, 70 times seven. Just keep, keep living this way. Just keep forgiving. So I had an interesting conversation with someone this week. I said, well, I, I really, I'm, I'm not ready to forgive him. And, and I just said, gee, that doesn't sound like Jesus. Now, I would suggest you not say that to your spouse or to, you know, your parents. But we, we need to live with forgiveness, don't we? Isn't that what grace is about? People don't have to live up to our standards. And in fact, we don't even have to live up to theirs. We live in grace. It's all blessing. I got caught off guard with, uh, by that this morning as I was reflecting on yesterday, and I admitted it to Jim uh, earlier today. I-, I was sitting here just thinking about yesterday and thinking, I arrived here to a church that lights were already on because Jim was preparing breakfast for all the workers and for our Power and Unity meeting. He was already here working. That doesn't happen all that much, and that was wonderful. And I was sitting here this morning going, what a blessing that was. What grace abounded. And then all these pastors that I haven't seen, because our, our last meeting was when I was in Kenya, so I haven't seen them in a couple months. And it's hugs, and it's celebrations, and it's sharing, and it's finding out all the ways that God has been working in each other's lives and telling stories. And the meeting could have gone on all day. In fact, some guys were still here around noon. <laughs> um, but the celebration of what friendship's all about. And then going outside, and there were more people working outside than I imagined. Y'all were working like dogs. And, and I had the chance of, of working alongside my brothers and sisters out there. How, how wonderful that is. It's all grace. Then I went home and did some pottery so you guys can buy some things on the live nativity on the pottery table and worked that for a couple hours and, and said, okay. And then Jill got home and we had a great dinner and, and watched actually a, a great football game. And Okay, yeah, Bulldogs won. Hallelujah. Okay, so, you know, just grace, it's all grace. Nothing earned, nothing deserved, not lists of things to accomplish. Grace. We enter into that through repentance and forgiveness. It's another reason why we need to go to God every day, don't we? Just to be, remind ourselves that, that the real understanding of life is not what we accomplish, who, fi- who, who gets our list done, and so life is stable and healthy again. It's not how, that's not how we're called to live. We live by grace. Don't we? Can I hear an amen and hallelujah? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> okay, but there's, there's something else that it, we experience with that forgiveness, and that's amazing. It's freedom. Uh, look with me. I mean, there's lots of wonderful quotes for, for, but look at the Galatians one, Galatians chapter 5. You probably have heard this one frequently. Just go to left a little bit. It's really what we're told here is one of the purposes that Christ has for us. It is so we live in freedom. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Okay, so what do we need freedom from? Let's, let's talk about that word. What do we need freedom from? We need freedom from sin, absolutely. We need freedom from, from that which we get caught in in our lives, the selfishness, the flesh, uh, and, and yes, the sin of others. We, we need freedom from that. So we're not bondage to that. And certainly if, if we're dealing with issues of abuse from childhood or otherwise, yeah, we, we, need, we need freedom from that which gets in there and needs to be set free. Don't ever be content if there's something in your life or the past that hasn't yet been healed or forgiven. Maybe it's time now for the Lord to say, it's time for freedom on that. You're now, your faith is mature enough, let's take that one on. It's time for freedom. Right, Shannon? Right, Britt? That's what you guys spend so much time of your day-to-day life doing, helping people find freedom. What else do we need freedom from? Yeah, that's right. Everything's around the world itself and all the values of the world. Doesn't, doesn't watch, even watching some of the commercials, doesn't it make you sick? Absolutely sick. I, um, I'll admit one that I spotted out 
about twice, I think, now. Poor Jill was the only one in the room, so she heard me twice now. Um, and, and I'm glad you don't work for Home Depot anymore, Scott, because it's a, it's a new Home Depot commer commercial for Christmas. And so we can get into the magic of Christmas. And there, it's the family's blowing up a colored inflatable dragon. A dragon. And I'm going, the magic of Christmas is now an inflatable dragon? It's bad enough to get an inflatable Santa, but uh, an inflatable dragon? Really? That's it? That's what's going to sell the magic of Christmas. I'm going, really? That's where the, that's, that, folks, that's the world we live in. There's a lot of countries in the world you don't have to live in that stuff. But we need freedom from that, don't we? We need to go, right away, we need to say, that's yuck. I don't want, I don't want the magic of Christmas. I don't want that anywhere in me. I'd rather have the wonder of Christmas and the birth of a Messiah. Don't you? You see? So we need freedom from that. What else do we need freedom from? We've mentioned our sin, the flesh. We've mentioned the world. What else do we need freedom from? Well, the workplace. Yeah, maybe you do. Uh, I, you, I have volunteer work here in the church if you want. <laughs> no, um, yeah, the work, work environment, the world that we have there, <coughs> the put-downs, the language that people are willing to use with a stranger, it's remarkable. Any freedom from that? What? Freedom from fear. Oh, yeah. How many things do we get so caught up with? We're so afraid we're going to be late. We're so afraid we're going to not be good enough. We're so afraid. What? Nonsense. What? Oh, yep, absolutely. Worried. Worried about the elections. Worried about the subsequent uh, consequence of the elections. Worried about, worried about, worried about, will I have enough? Worried. What? How is that trusting God? Ah, very good. I like that one. That's very good. Let, let life unfold. My dad often used to say, uh, this too shall pass. When we started getting anxious, this too shall pass. Don't, you know, put it in proper perspective. You see, the, the mystery of freedom is that's what Christ died for and rose so we could be free of that. Now, now let's consider in the, the language of, of history what we talk about at baptism that we deny, we renounce the world, the flesh, and the devil. In whatever language we're using, those are often, that formula is so often part of, of ancient baptism ceremonies and even ones that we use around here. Uh, the world, we're, we're, we're renouncing all of that. We aren't going to be tied to all that darkness. We're not going to be defined by entertainment or the, or the internet or the news. We're not going to be defined by the work environment. We're not going to be defined by the darkness of this world. No. We're going to be free from that. We renounce that. We want to live in the light. The flesh. Just all the stuff that puts us at the center. We're going to be free from self and the selfish centeredness that, of pride that so often drives us. Isn't it amazing that we, we carry around phones now that, that lie to us and convince us we're at the center of our own universe? BFF today, gone tomorrow. You know, just <laughs> news, I don't want to read it. This news, I do want to read it. And, and we somehow think that that defines us. And we have, we're raising a generation who absolutely think that. B but it's, it's not just that. It, it's, I really think that for much of my life, Jill can confirm this is true, uh, I really thought I was at the center of my universe. I just invited her to come along. I was grateful she said yes and waited until I got off the stage. There's great, f isn't that right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's great freedom in not having to be on the stage, that the stage is Christ. Or if you want another image that works, you may be on a stage working out your, your role, but there's only one in the audience, and it's Jesus because you're doing it all for him. There's great freedom in that, that you don't have, the world hasn't have to, doesn't have to swirl around you and, and what your opinions are and what your thoughts are and what you need to have happen in the course of a day. Now, moms, I'm not disagreeing that you need to run a roost at home. I, I, I'm not. I am saying that when we put ourselves at the center, 
even if we're raising kids. We're defining the quality of life by how well the kids behave rather than, Lord, what am I doing for you today to raise my children to be godly men and women for your service? That's a different type of internal dialogue, isn't there? Lord, what, am I, what can I do today to help my daughter to understand how to grow up to serve you? And, and there's great freedom when, when, when you don't have to be at the center. But we also have to ha- recognize the other part. It's the world, the flesh, and the, the devil or Satan. There is darkness. And uh, that darkness we see played out in addictions. We see it in, in, in a horrible treatment of children. We see it in manipulation and all sorts of stuff that's just really ugly. We see it in, in pornography. and I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And it's darkness. It's not life-giving. And, and what we're told is that he moved us from death to life. So we have to get out of the stinking thinking where we're putting each other down or putting ourselves down, which is horrible because that's death, isn't it? That is the clothes that Lazarus had on him. They are death clothes, and we need help to have them removed because that's not life-giving. There's many things we slip into when we're tired or we're hurting or we're upset, and we're slipping into darkness. Don't go there. Don't go there. And that's why we need help. We need, a res- we need another rescue mission. Maybe a rescue mission from a friend, but we need a rescue mission. <laughs> because we, we're, we're called to be free. We don't have to be upset. That's why Scripture tells us, even at the grave, we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Confident in the victory. Oh, we still got to live it out, of course not denying the pain, but there's freedom. We know where we're going. Oh, sure, we might be in a dark time for a while, but we know we're moving to the light, aren't we? Church, aren't we moving towards the light? That's the freedom, that we have hope, (laughs) that this life of grace says we always have hope. God's not done with us. Thanks be to God. That's awesome. See, so so F3, we, we have first the wonder that we, we are forgiven. And we have to live a life of forgiveness. Second, we have, Christ has, has died and rose so we can be free. We can live the life that God wants for us. Wow. Doesn't that just blow your mind that you're that important to God? I'll, I need to tell you one more story in this. Uh, our granddaughter, our oldest one, Courtney, called us this past week. She was very concerned and upset. She was... She had a dream, and it, with the dream, she was driving fast in the car. There was a big accident, and, and the car flipped over and all sorts of things, and, and it caused her great anxiety. She called her mom, and her mom said, Hon, that, that's probably due to the fact that you're in the midst of your final projects. You're working very long hours at work. You, you just, you, you're, you're racing. And, and that was probably the living of that out. And she said, okay, Mom, but I don't know. I'm just starting to get panic attacks and stuff from it, whatever, whatever those are. But the, the kind of, Ugh. So... She's in the, uh, the car on Thursday. She's driving along, and she's realizing she's driving faster than she should. She's talking to her boyfriend, and he says, you know, maybe that dream was something from God to just invite you to calm down a little bit. And she said, yeah, maybe it is. Maybe I should just do that. She takes her foot off the pedal. She said, Pop, to be honest with you, I was driving slower than everybody around me, and they were real angry at me, but I realized I didn't care. I was going to be free of their pointing fingers because I was more concerned about my own health and of trying to figure out what is going on right now. She said, I turned off the street. Uh, the street to my apartment is a, normally post about 35. She said, to be honest, I'm probably going, going 40. And she said, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go 25. And she said, just as she started, a huge deer jumped in front of her and was on his way. And she said, Pop, I had to call to tell you, the Lord used a dream and a panic attack to protect me. I said, that's right, hon. That's what the Lord does. That's because he loves you so much. And it's an answer to our prayer for you this morning that we prayed that you'd have wisdom. And she said, well, I am just amazed that God loves me that much. Do you hear what she's talking about? She's talking about being free of even the night fears that we looked at (laughs) 
uh, two weeks ago, free of all the anxiety that she realized that, that those were just triggers to come back to God. And she's 19, and she gets it. Do we get it? The difficulties and struggles in life are to cause us to run back to Jesus and to be free. and Say, that doesn't define me, but he might be using it. And then I laughed with her and I said, yeah, we got a pretty awesome God, don't we? He uses a nightmare and panic attack to draw you close to him. And she said, yeah, he's amazing. That's wonderful. She said, I am that loved. And I said, yes, you are. Freedom. But then we get to the last, the wondrous, how we live this out together. And he gives us fellowship. Now, that fellowship is such a, such a weak Christian word, at least in the English, because we think fellowship hour, having coffee together, seeing an old bud, that's not this word at all. This word in the Greek is koinonia. We don't really have a good, solid word for it in English because it's the sharing of life. It's with journeying together. It's what the earliest disciples devoted themselves to that we read about in Acts chapter 2. They devoted themselves, that word is a good translation, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, that's scripture, and they devoted themselves to fellowship and the breaking of bread and prayer. Yes, but they, they devoted themselves to this koinonia, this sharing of life together. Even in the study we had this morning, Jesus, here's your mother and your, and your brothers. And he says, well, where are my mother and my brothers? Here is my mother and my... This is the fellowship. The Spirit's thicker than blood. This is the family that I journey with. And, and we all have thousands of examples of that, don't we? Uh, one of them is the prayers. I, I can't tell you how much all of our folks who are struggling with so many things right now how much they appreciate knowing they're not facing this alone. Chris, you are not facing it alone. You are not. It may feel like it on occasion. You're not. We're all with you. This is a family thing. We're all struggling. I heard from Ann last night. She's grateful for the prayers. I talked to Becky last night. Grateful for the prayers. Uh, you know, we all journey together. Steve, Stella, we're journeying on this together. We, that's how we live, isn't it? That's, that's why ye yesterday was such a joy, to first meet my pastor brothers and sisters, and then to go out and see and journey and work and labor alongside my brothers and sisters there. That's how we live. That's the great gift of grace. We're not trying to impress anybody. We're not trying to have anybody do what we want. We're just sharing life together. Wow, what a gift of grace. Haven't deserved it, haven't earned it, can't make it work, it comes as gift. Undeserved blessings. Wow. We get to journey together. So I, I want you to just let your mind be blown a little bit about how much God loves you. He loves you so much that he sent his son so you could be forgiven. So it could all be gone. And everybody that's hurt you, that could be let go too. And it starts with repentance it, it just is, is the ability to let God work his rescue mission in us over and over and over again. Ongoing. Sometimes, often, many times a day. I heard a pastor just yesterday giving a testimony. He talked about an event that he was, he was doing in his church, and, and then he realized God was calling him to task and, and that he was really doing it for himself and not for the Lord. And he said, so I learned that, and I've, for, uh, ever since then, I've, I've just been living for the Lord. I looked at him and said, that only took once for you? <laughs> and I said, I'm still working on it today, bro. And everybody laughed, and, and he said, well, that was one event. And I said, okay, one event, but you said that was all done. And I said, I'm still working on that whole thing. We get to be forgiven for all those mistakes and stupid little thinking things we do. How many times do we think it's all about me? Or I've got to figure it out, or I've got to make it work. He says, no, you're forgiven from that. Why don't you just live for me, says the Lord. But it's not just forgiveness, it's freedom. We're free from all of that. That's what Christ died for. He died that we'd be free, that we'd live this whole new life. And, and he even uses the language, death to life. It's life for us. But it's not just that. 
We got to journey together. Wow. How wondrous is that? So, the wonder of grace, F3. Forgiveness, freedom, fellowship. I don't want to live any other way. Amen. Don't know what the Lord's got for us next week? I'll let you know when we're told. Lots of things to pray for, aren't there? So, uh, and yeah, I'll, just, I'll give you a couple updates from the, those calls. Uh, Becky said that Mike's heart is racing, and uh, he, he does need to get um, strength to walk before they release him from rehab. So after 34 days, was it, in critical care, he's now on his second, third week in rehab. Um, Anne's back surgery uh, did not go well as they thought. She um, will have some healing. She does still have some neuropathy. They said it would take quite a bit of time for her to get strong on her feet again. She's in rehab now, hopes to be released in a couple days. Um, Chris has got an important meeting tomorrow about his future, and we'll pray for that. Um, Tilly. Yes. And remind me his name? Steve. 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 Okay. And I did get a call that I was asked to share with you from my sister. I a couple, called, told a couple of you this week. My sister Marge called. She's the one that's been dealing with um, the cancer and the chemo for the last three years. Uh, she went in for her, her tests on Wednesday. They called her Thursday morning and said, uh, we'll see you in six months. We can't find anything. And, and what was remarkable was they weren't prepared for that because they haven't heard anything like that in the last three years when they gave her three months to live. So uh, God did an amazing work on this limp thing at her breast. And um, w what I told her was, uh, sis, thanks for not giving up. And she said, I couldn't because of all your prayers, <laughs> because of the love of my husband. We all need each other for this. We've got to stop trying to fig think we can f face it on our own. That's the darkness of the American culture. That's not the way of Christ. We face it together. When you look at Scripture, about the only thing that you ever see someone doing by themselves is Jesus on the cross. Everything else is two by two or more. So let's go to prayer and journey together. Blessed and Holy Father, we thank you that you are the sovereign Lord of heaven and earth and that you have given your son Jesus that we might be forgiven, that we might live in freedom, that we might enjoy true fellowship in your spirit. And Father, we thank you that you have given us new life. You have performed that divine rescue mission and that we are yours. Uh, Lord, we, we acknowledge that living in this world is a tough business, a wearying business. And yes, one day we will all depart from it. But until then, Lord, we thank you that you journey with us that we do not have to live in fear. We thank you that you are the sovereign Lord and that we can live for you as we serve one another. Father, many in our community are, are suffering and struggling with challenges. We pray for Mike. Uh, we pray that his heart would return to its normal rhythm. And we pray that you would grant him peace and healing. We pray that he would soon be able to return home and return and join us. We pray for Becky, Becky, Lord, for a peace that passes all understanding. We pray, Father, for Anne, that you would bring accelerated healing to her back and that she would soon be mobile and be able to return home and, yes, to return to be with us. And we pray for continued healing and peace for Chuck as he stands at her side. We pray for Chris, Lord, as he... Uh, faces an important decision tomorrow, we pray you would, he would be granted your grace, your favor, and your peace. We thank you that you journey with him and with us all. 
We ask your blessing on Steve for the healing of his body. For Steve and Stella as they continue to process the loss of Matt. For Liz as she lives with her new normal and the loss of her beloved horse. Pray for Allison for continued healing. We pray for Matt and his family as they are apart and for the Ringer household as they are preparing for the loss of their grandma. For others in this community who need your special protection and your healing, Lord. For each of us that we would grow in your grace. Pray for our school, Lord, that your blessing would be upon them. For our search and hiring team as they continue their labor on our behalf. We thank you for the many who have been blessings to us this week, Lord. Lord, thank you again for the vets, for all those who have served this nation on our behalf. Lord, we thank you for all the serendipitous surprises in life that remind us that you are God. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' name.